to sit on the edge of whatever seat it is that you choose to sit on. And you can rock a little bit back and forth so that you can find the sit bones in touch with the seat. Uh, so you can use the edge of the seat, you can get near the edge of the seat so that you can find that the sit bones are going down into the surface but you also want to use the edge of the seat to feel that the sit bones can go a little bit back behind you. And when you do that you'll start to feel um, that there's an activation of your core and you could start to sense the, the wrapping of the deepest abdominal layer. So then you want to align the ankle joint with the knee joint because you will get the most flow down through the lower leg when the knee is right above the ankle. And of course then as you know if the knee and the ankle are, if there's energy flowing down from the knee through the ankle that gives you the leverage that you need to be able to draw the heel back. So you can look down at your feet and then you can see that the ball toe part of your foot, you want to feel that the ball of the big toe and the ball of the pinky toe, that you find those on each foot evenly on the floor and then the toes flow forward off of the ball. And the feet should be so that the knee and the hip joint are aligned as well. So it goes not outer hip but hip joint, knee joint, and ankle joint. So then as we always set it up, you feel that there's the ball part of the foot and again it's the ball of the big toe, ball of the pinky toe on each foot and you feel that the balls of the feet deepen down into the floor and then the toes flow forward. Then you can feel that with the ball toe part of the foot flowing forward and that's the very gentle part. Then you can feel that you can draw the heels of the feet and that's where the power is, that's where the real leverage is. You can draw the heels of the feet back. So then you start to form the relationship between the heels of the feet which are going back and then down into the surface so they, the heels of the feet release back away from the ankles and then down and that's the same as the sit bones going down and back behind you. And again, the main purpose of this is to build your core support for your lower spine. So you have things in the body, feet, sit bones, femur bones, hamstrings, all of those forces will help you to connect to your core. Ball toes flowing forward, heels expanding back, then you can find that the hamstrings will start to activate and you want to feel that the hamstrings can draw all the way back and start to help you to stabilize your sit bones even more. So then take the palms of your hands and they can help you to start to release the tightness in the tops of the thighs. So you could take both palms if you'd like on each one depending on how tight this muscle is and you can use the palms to release the tightness in the muscle so that this muscle rather than feeling like it's lifting the femur bone up it feels like it just flows softly over the bone. And you can place your palm so that the thumb part of the heel of the hand can help you to direct the bone that's underneath the tops of the thighs. So send the energy of your palms down through these uh, top thigh muscles to the bone and then start to guide the bone back. And this is where you want to be conscious of that this bone doesn't push, the arm bone doesn't push forward. It goes into the joint so that it can start to expand your uh, the wing muscles and tart start to expand your ribs and you can start your breathing and remember that the breathing is down into the lower ribs and expanding wide so once you feel comfortable with that you can take 
one foot and cross it over. And you want to make sure that when you do cross this one over that the supporting foot doesn't push out to the side or the supporting the low, lower part of the supporting leg doesn't push out to the side. So that's still aligned, the knee over the ankle. And then just make sure that this ankle that's crossed over isn't uh, crunched, that you cross it far enough over that the ankle clears the leg. Then you take, can take both of your palms again and get this bone, since you're doing this more on your own, feel that this, you can kind of soften the muscle again, the top of the thigh, and you can feel like the thigh muscles are going to just very gently wrap around the bone so that the bone doesn't flop. You want the bone, even with this cross leg, so you can do the support femur and then you can do the femur that's crossed over. And then what I usually do is once this bone starts to deepen more and I get the feeling of that the bone is going back into the joint but also spinning in just a little bit. It's very, very subtle. Then you can uh, reach over and start to draw the hamstring back more and spread the haunch, start spreading the butt and the haunch off of the sit bone. And then you can start your breathing. You find your eye focus. You get the sense of the head not being forward but coming back so that the head feels that it directs the whole spine that's above your navel line. So the part of the spine that's above your navel line, that goes in a flow out the top of your head, but it's a very gentle wave, so it's not a straight line. You can feel that there's a little bit of a wave, and then that'll start to help you to feel that the spine that's below the navel line, which is the part of the spine that needs the support and the wrap, that that part of the spine is the lumbar spine with the sacrum, then connected to the tail. All of that is in a gentle wave down and back behind you. So you can put a hand, I usually take the rounded palm of my hand and put it with the rounded heel, and then this hand can come under. And then you breathe. And you'll see that you can start to slowly come a little bit forward, but you're not moving your lower, so you're not shoving your lower spine forward. You come from being a little bit back to coming a little bit forward, and that's when you can start to feel the stretch more. You do that with the leverage of the lower spine. So you've got the leverage of the heel, the leverage of the sit bones, the leverage of the femur bones, and then you start to use the leveraging of the direction of the tail down and back behind you. So the heel going down and back, the sit bones going down and back, and the lower spine going down and back, they're all the same degree of arc. And it's not a very big arc, but it is an arc. It's very important to make sure that it's an arc and not feeling like it's straight in any way. So I usually go from supporting each leg or this heel and this leg to using both my palms on this. So for me, really the spinning of the bone while it's deepening in, while it's deepening back, it also spins in a little bit. And then that's what helps you to start to feel that the butt expands, kind of spreads down off of your sit bone. That's what starts to make the haunch hip. So you can also put your hands back behind you and start to feel where the uh, joints are on either side of the sacrum. You can start to feel that those joints are widening away from one another. And that's the whole point. It's to get the stretch of the tightness in the butt, but it's really to open up your sacrum. And I'll show you that from the other side. 
and breathe. And again, you can, I mean, you don't have to do this with your skull, but this is what I would do if I were helping you. I would just put a little bit of a wave to the upper spine and that tends to release the shoulders and the neck and starts to get your wing muscles that are connected to your ribs to start to release down and those wing muscles will come down and start to support those lumbar vertebrae as well. And so then once you start to feel that there's a good release going on in this whole butt and haunch area, then you can go into your rotation. And you want to make sure that this arm doesn't go from here, that you keep this upper arm bone connected into its joint so that it feels what's move so that it feels that what's moving your arm is your wing. So that comes around and you stay stable. And then if you'd like you can go into a little bit of a fountain. So this is again with the whole thoracic spine fountains out and over and then it can go into a gentle spiral. But all of these movements should help you to get your lumbar spine to go more down and back behind you with the opening of the sacrum. So as the butt releases and you get more of a feeling of not having a leg from the front but having a whole haunch from the back, then you breathe again. And so it may be that your hand comes, this support hand may come down to the table, it may not. You don't have to have any weight into this support hand. And so you can start to feel this wrap from back to front. So as those lumbar vertebra become supported because you're directing them down through the sacrum and out the tail, then those vertebra with more space in between them, the deepest abdominal layer which is, has horizontal fibers, that can widen and wrap around all the way to the front. That's your uh, deepest abdominal layer called the transversus, transversus abdominis. And I'm just going to stay here because this is a good stretch to breathe into and you can continue it and continue to feel the tightness in this whole underside area releases so that you can expand more through the back of the hip or haunch. And you can also start to strengthen your support leg too. Okay, so the second side I'll show from the back. And I'll sit a little bit further back so you can see. So same thing, you find the alignment of the ankle underneath the knee and you feel that the ball part of the toes or the ball part of the foot that's connected to the toes deepens down into the floor and flows forward. So that then you can feel that you use the ball toes flowing forward to help you to draw the heels back. Now, here you can see clearly this is what we're going for. Rather than having two legs from the front, we're looking to have this haunch and this haunch which opens the sacrum so that this lumbar spine which needs the support can flow down through the sacrum and out your tail. So, 
ball toes flowing forward, ankles underneath the knees, ankles, knees, and hip joints aligned. So once the ball toe part of the foot is flowing forward, you want to use the flowing forward that's like a wave, ball toes like a wave forward to help you to get the leverage, the power of the heel drawing back. That drawing back of the heels will help you to feel that the sit bones are not just going straight down into the surface. You want the sit bones to go down and back. So heels are going down and back, sit bones are going down and back, and then you start to feel that the tail can go down and back. And it's all of those forces, those complementary forces, the heels going down and back, the sit bones going down and back, and the central tail, which is part of your spine, central tail going down and back, all in the same degree of arc. Heels, sit bones, tail, then you start to feel that these lower vertebra, which tend to be pushed back or pulled under, that they don't get shoved forward, they lengthen down through the sacrum and out the tail using leveraging heels, leveraging sit bones. So, then you can cross the other one, cross the ankle well over the knee so that the ankle isn't at all on top of the thigh, it's over. And you can use your hands to help you to soften tops of the thighs. And you can take both hands if you'd like and use them to kind of wrap or very gently swirl the thigh over the bone so that it connects into the joint. And that's what gives you your stretch. It's this soft wrapping of the muscles that are around the femur bone and the femur bone even though it's going in and it's turned out a little bit but you don't let it flop you can support it here or with both hands initially so that you can really feel that all of this that's on the side the butt and the back of the hip that tends to get pushed tight in and under that it's going to release back and wide and you'll feel that more of your sit bone is on the surface of the table. So you can put one hand on your heel that's crossed over and the other hand on the knee that's crossed over and then you can start to use the leverage of the support heel drawing down and back with its same sit bone going down and back, and then you can get more down and back of both sit bones evenly so that you have support for the tail. So it's very important, even though one leg is crossed over and one is down, to feel both sit bones evenly down and back because that's what's in between them. The tail has to go with both of the sit bones down and back so that the sacrum opens and you can lengthen the lower spine. And again, here's the lumbar spine with the deepest abdominal layer widening and wrapping around to the front. And Undulation of your upper spine that starts above the navel line. That's your thoracic spine. It's in a little bit of a wave. When it does a little bit of a wave, you can feel that more of the breath goes into here.
and that's when it starts to stretch more. This lumbar sacrum tail line gets more and more free as the spine above it is more free, as the wings start to wrap down, and as the deepest abdominal layer wraps around. So then, this one, you can take it into your fountain. We'll show the fountain from back here. So it's still an undulation, a little gentle wave from above the navel line so that what's below the navel line can really draw down and back the powerful leverage. So then the upper spine goes into a fountain. And you can feel that that helps you to get even a deeper stretch into this whole butt and hip area. And then you keep the stability of your sit bones even and both going down and back and you keep the tail drawing out. And so it's the ribs rotating, not the lower spine, and then your head and upper spine still from above the navel line, that can unwind and spiral. And again, you may have a full contact with your hand or you can just use your fingers, fingertips like I'm doing. And you keep the arm bone of the arm that's coming across so that you're moving a wing. You keep that arm bone into the shoulder joint and breathe open. And you can feel this back area widen and wrap around and your center line spine, lumbar sacrum tail, pulls down and through. And that's where you'll get the deepest stretch in your hip that opens your sacrum. And breathe. Haunches. The tail is below the sacrum, the lumbar spine is above the sacrum. So we want to make a line of lumbar, sacrum, tail, all as one leveraging force so that what's above the lumbar can expand ribs, lungs, lats, wings, and then the spine in between the wings spirals through. 